quiet force of the party who brings stability and confidence to any aspect of the movement. He has the job to bring organizational cohesion throughout the party. Director Timaringa supervises over the implementations of protocols and mandates which aim to create a seamless process throughout the party and movement. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. Let's welcome Comrade Director Timaringa Tilambao and all comrades in the Office of National Director of Organization, Kenya Yestatella and Janaba Lumumba. Uhuru, comrades. Uhuru, Uhuru. Uh, I hope I can be heard okay. I want to uh, appreciate our leadership, Chairman O'Malley Yestatella, Chairman of the African People's Socialist Party. I want to salute Deputy Chair uh, owner Zanae Shetela, and I also want to thank my team in the National Director of Organization Office, uh, Kenya Shetela, who is the Chief of Staff, Janaba Lumumba, Life Malcolm, Jamal Abigail, and Modi Casanova. So what we have done is put together a uh, video to tell you some about the National Director of Organization Office. We are a field operation uh, team. Uh, we handle recruitment and we do a lot of other things in terms of making sure that the union, that the units and regions are following our constitution. And uh, we carry out some very important tasks in terms of consultations with our units all over the world uh, regions all over the world, and uh, we carry out that uh, function of, of, of recruitment and also being a field operative. We've uh, done things in other states as well. I'm located in Florida, but we've done things in other states as well. And I just want to, again, thank my team and salute Chairman Omar Chitella and Owners of Nea Chitella. So, with no further ado, you'll see a very descriptive uh, video that's going to be coming up. Uh, my team put it together. I thought it was a great video, and I hope you'll believe the same thing once you finish watching. Buhuru. Buhuru. My name is Chimaringa Silambao. I'm the National Director of Organization for the African People's Socialist Party. I want to appreciate our leadership, Chairman O'Malley Ishitella and Deputy Chair Owner Zane Ishitella. So the department that I lead is the National Director of Organization. And what we do, we our primary job is as field operatives. So we organize uh, with the regions to build units and LPOs and also the regional committees themselves. And this is an important job in terms of what we do. And um, for a couple of years, uh, we've been doing this and now we are involved in two primary things. One, we handle the recruitment as well uh, in part of the job of the National Director of Organization Office. And also we handle security. So our primary focus in this particular uh, piece is uh, the piece on recruitment. But before I start the presentation with the other members of my team, I want to introduce them. Uh, Janaba Lamumba, who is a recruitment specialist, Chief of Staff Kenya Ishitella, Recruitment Specialist Life Malcolm, Administrative Assistant Modi Casanova and Security Liaison Jamal Abigail. So this is a great team of individuals and I want to appreciate them for participating in this PowerPoint and presenting this video and also the other parts of the PowerPoint. So with no further ado, I want to introduce Janeable Lamuma. Uhuru Comrade Director, and I will discuss our system tools that we use every day. 
one of the reasons why we've updated our systems tools is so that we can prepare for the onslaught of people who will be who are joining the party at any given moment an organizational tool that we use in-house so that all of our documents our emails and our files and any other media we have when they leave we internally have the ability to delete their account and all of the files that they worked on with the party gets transferred to someone in leadership as opposed to just being lost forever our goal is to be able to touch bases with our contacts within four hours or less of receiving an alert from a contact automation tool and it automates our responses so we can use several of our tools such as google workspace the one two three contact form to generate automated responses and to allow us to reach our metrics like contacting everyone within four hours so that we can retrieve the information that we need to proceed with the second part of the application with all of these new tools that we're using there will of course need to be education and training if someone isn't available to attend a meeting they can watch on their own time they can even speed up the videos if they don't have much time and they can also leave comments underneath it's completely secure and allows for us to simply share information and we can house all of these training tools inside a loom to alleviate the constant meetings. We also have the problem of how do we train our comrades and cadre and monitor this? There's another tool that we have at our disposal to develop a curriculum online so that the sponsorship and other leadership can review and track the progress of the comrade who's coming in through sponsorship. And that will help us to ensure that this comrade is getting some of the basic knowledge and the basic information that they need to develop into an African internationalist. In addition to these tools that make it easier for us to communicate, we also have reporting tools that we're going to be equipped with. I'm very happy to have gone over all of the, some of the different <laughs> systems tools that we're going to be using and I'm very excited to be hosting some of the training sessions. And don't forget, a lot of these roles are still open. So reach out to me and any of anyone in our office and we can uh, get you onto the winning team here. <laughs> so with that, I wish you uhuru, uhuru, uhuru. Uhuru, my name is Kenya. I'm the chief of staff for the NDO. I wanna to talk to you a little bit today about our interview protocols, things that we've done to streamline the process to bring members in, as well as some of the things that we have planned for the future. We are an organization of organizers, and in turn, that means that we're recruiters as well. We all have been mandated by the party to build the party's presence wherever we are. That means every event, every action, every time we go out and sell the Burning Spirit newspaper, is an opportunity to recruit, to build. We are winning and the only way that we can really win is to bring people into this Vanguard organization. It is our job to create mechanisms and programs that will allow us to grow the ranks without any impediments. These are some of the things that we've done to improve our recruitment efforts. Please note, <laughs> this by no means means that we have it all figured out, but here it goes. We are now at a two part interview process. That means that once we've identified either through our one, two, three contact forms, through our actions, our events, or selling the Burning Spear newspaper, that contact, now what we would do is we would have an interview, what we call part one, basic demographic information, but also the real conversations to find out if this potential candidate is a good fit for the African People's Socialist Party, the Vanguard Party. If it is, and if that recruiter or organizer has determined that, yes, we wanna go forward, then we would send that potential candidate part two and part three. That is where they would fill out 
complete some questions, talks about unity, talks about what we want, what we believe. And then when they send that back again, within 24 hours, we let them know this. Then we would set up our last interview process. And that is with our three member recruitment team at that particular last interview. That's where we're going to be doing the deep dive. What other organizations have someone been involved in? We're looking for red flags. We're looking for, is this potential comrade that's going to be my comrade going to be the best fit for the African People's Socialist Party? And if that's not the case at that last interview, then we can always redirect them back to our mass organizations. Because one of the goals that we do have as far as the NDO's office is to pull from the mass organization at least 75 active members by December 31st, 2022. That is really a streamlined process, right? I know, I know. I said that, you know, anything that we need to do to take away any potential difficulty or impediments from recruiting, that's what we want to do. But at the same time, we know that once we bring them in, we know that how do we keep... Now, that doesn't mean that we want to keep everybody. Some people we're going to have to let go and that's okay. But we want to create for the future, different things that we can do to improve retention. Everyone that comes into the organization is not an African internationalist and may not have a clear understanding of what democratic centralism is. We really want to celebrate that cadre. We want to celebrate our comrades. We want to do it with patches, with pins, with lanyards that really boast the fact that we're in this revolutionary organization and it's something that we should be proud about. If we're not loud and proud, how can we really engage the people? And that's really what it's about, building the party's presence. This Burning Spear newspaper, 50 years of history behind us. We can do it. We're winning. We want to win. We must win. Build the African People's Socialist Party. This is your opportunity to join right now, today. Don't miss out. You see how easy it is. You can be a member. You could be sitting here where I am right now today. Uhuru. Uhuru. I'm Comrade Jamal Abigaz, a security liaison to the Office of the National Director of Organization. Uhuru. So I appreciate everyone for watching the video and uh, shortly we'll be starting the video back up. Uh, just want to tell you a little bit about some of the events that we have been involved in. Uh, we were involved in the Black is Back Coalition March on Washington, uh, where the National Director of Organization Office played a very large role in bringing people to Washington, D.C. Uh, my team was very uh, much involved in bringing people there, and uh, we had one of the largest contingents at the March to Washington, D.C. In St. Petersburg, Florida, we've also organized uh, demonstrations around the Haiti situation, the attacks on Haiti, and we've also organized a uh, celebration on uh, October 24th that celebrated the uh, memory of uh, Tyron Lewis, who was killed, murdered by St. Petersburg police in 1996, uh, setting off one of the most important uh, rebellions of African people in this country. Uh, this was, was a rebellion that uh, had political consciousness, and it was a real effort to um, uh, change the political and economic situation in the city of St. Pete. For the next eight years, uh, no African was killed uh, by the St. Petersburg Police Department. So we've been involved in uh, recruitment uh, for the forces who are sending us what we call one, two, three contact forms. And we also have been uh, pushing recruitment on the ground and I want to tell you about a very important recruitment effort that we'll have uh, coming up very shortly. Uh, on May 28th, uh, the NDO will be leading the process to bring the African Liberation Day 
which is going to be May 28th, 2022, in many cities around the U.S. and all over the world. Uh, this will have vendors, parades, and we will also have important political conferences that will be in talking about the important political issues of the African community. So we encourage everyone to uh, come to the we encourage everyone to come to the okay, I think I'm getting a message. Okay. So we're gonna go back to the video comrades, but ALD African Liberation Day, May 28th, 2022, St. Petersburg, Florida, Oakland, California. And we'll be talking at the end. I'll be telling you some some of the other locations like London, England, and Paris, France. Uhuru. Uhuru. I'm Comrade Jamal Abigaz, a security liaison to the Office of the National Director of Organization. And I'm here today to say that when the NDO does it, the African working class responds. And we are always at the work. The NDO works tirelessly to grow the party and the movement through our various organizations and campaigns. And in the last year, its director, uh, Comrade Chemerenga, has been working relentlessly to ensure that the work of the office puts the party line to the masses through these campaigns and associated actions. For instance, in St. Louis, now the party's seat, two elections for alder persons in wards three and 21 were tactical pushes into the electoral arena where African internationalism was powerfully voiced by comrade President Columba E. Antoinette of Impidum. Director Chimarenga led the campaign to seize territory and bring Africans back into political life as the campaign manager. The director's intervention on the ground in October 2020 revitalized the campaigns, delivering leadership to the campaign organizations that allowed the candidates themselves to go directly to the people to make the case that the colonial domination of Africans, wherever we are, is the cause of perennial blight in our communities, just like the north side of St. Louis. Black is Back Coalition. In November 2021, the Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations held their 13th annual conference and Black People's March on the White House. The Black is Back Coalition was formed in the wake of the election of Barack Obama as an answer to the bourgeois declaration that we had come to some quote-unquote post-racial time. The party called out to the many progressive organizations which stand for Black power to come together to confront the contradiction of colonial capitalism using our collective power to accomplish success on the ground. Led by our chairman, uh, Chairman Omali Eshetela, the Black is Back Coalition has been a force creating unity among African peoples everywhere. The NDO led the effort to organize party forces to attend this event. Through work with the regions, the contingency of 70 from the party was the largest of any of the coalition partners to attend. The NDO also led the party effort to secure the locations involved and the parade route itself through operations of the NSO. Over 100 people turned out to the march and even more for the rallies held before and after the march. The African nation marched to the chant of Kupitet, Bulakai, or cut heads, burn houses down the streets of the U.S. Capitol and to the doorstep of the colonial head of state himself. Tyron Lewis March. In October 2021, the NDO mobilized in memory of Tyron Lewis, 25 years after Tyron lives. The NDO led an action with Tyron's family in St. Pete to remember his life and brutal death at the hands of the murderous St. Petersburg Police Department. The African community and its allies together remember the tragedy, yes, but also the brilliant struggle waged by the African working class against the colonial state forces in the Battle of St. Pete. The difference in St. Pete was 
over 20 years of leadership by the African People's Socialist Party in the African community. Because of our work, the community understood who the enemy was and who it wasn't. Protecting the St. Peter Uhuru House from the incendiary rounds that were fired to burn it down with African men, women, and children inside. Also in 2021, the NDO oversaw the rebuilding of the St. Petersburg Local Party Unit. St. Petersburg, Florida is the party's birthplace and has served as the headquarters for much of the party's history. The party and the leadership of its constituent organizations are made up of party cadres. The important work of these mass organizations is relying on a strong party presence locally to lead in the work. Thus, the NDO oversaw the crucial task of rebuilding this unit, which is currently chaired by Comrade Dankster Lemwingo. The history of Tropicana Field is another page in the story of colonial genocide, or what some may call ethnic cleansing waged worldwide against the colonized. The land Tropicana Field uh, sits on was a large and vibrant African community. We were pushed out so the colonial ruling class could make massive profits. And now that the commodity that Tropicana Fields apparently was, has been used up for its purpose of entertainment, the colonizers want to unload the property for redevelopment. No. The African nation says no. The NDO has helped to initiate the reparations. Now, a campaign in this work initiating the campaign to get reparations to the African community of St. Petersburg, Florida. In this instance, it's the form of Tropicana Field. Petitions have gone out, demonstrations have been held, and a rally have all been undertaken uh, to push this campaign forward. We are developing a plan to bring back the Marcus Garvey celebrations of the 1970s once held in St. Pete for the purposes of building the party and the mass organizations worldwide. And we will use this opportunity and every opportunity to be first in facilitating the growth of the organizations which make up the Uhuru movement, prime among them its leading body, the vanguard party of the African working class, the African People's Socialist Party. Going forth from this plenary uh, throughout uh, 2020 and indeed until Africa Freedom is won, the Office of the National Director of Organization will be putting forth the work on the ground and facilitating in each region and each constituent organization's ability uh, to get that work done. What this means firmly is placing the organizing work in person as much as possible, putting forth the party and the movement as the clear uh, clear uh, force responsible for the revolution, for the freedom of the African nation, or overturn the colonial contradiction. Building the work on the ground has, you know, the utmost importance. It's in those communities uh, where we are, that the battle is won for ideas, for our lives, and where those lives are all too often lost, but where we also have some of our greatest victories. Truly, uh, the viability, the lifeblood of a revolution, of any movement, is built among the masses. And as we've seen, you know, all the way from, uh, from the Battle of St. Pete, uh, to uh, Ferguson, uh, Missouri, the work of the party, the work of the chairman, has been directly to go into those communities and raise the consciousness of Africans because we want to get free. And it's not just when tragedy strikes uh, that we have to be putting out that call. You put forth that call in the community ahead of time, right? The victory won by uh, the African community in St. Petersburg, Florida during those battles against an onslaught of uh, colonial state power firmly has its basis in the uh, decades at that point of leadership of the African uh, People's Socialist Party in the community. 
that constant call to community, that constant support that we offer each other as Africans, that education that we share a combined struggle based on our uh, foreign and alien domination is really what builds that sense of clarity and even unity that both wins uh, the masses to the organization, uh, to the organizations, and uh, to uh, will will win to protect us in in the times to come. And to that end, you're going to see the working units really grow, right? The whole call uh, of the chairman uh, in in the block by block strategy is to build units everywhere to really empower LPOs and to really grow uh, the movement and grow the reach and capability of ourselves to self-govern, to provide and uh, to meet the material needs of our own community and build that dual and contending power that will uh, keep the African nation on the path to liberation and redemption. And so when you see uh, out of the office of the NDO, you know, uh, a revival of the Marcus Garvey uh, celebration in St. Pete or the African Liberation Day uh, events to come. You know, when you see those coming from the party, expect the office of the NDO uh, to have uh, clarity both in the task and in how to get it done. You know, com comrades will talk about uh, the... Uh, level of dedication with which that we're approaching the task of building those training tools necessary. Uh, and to add to that, because again, we are growing. It's not just uh, current cadre, current mass forces who uh, will uh, join the party, uh, who we need to be prepping. It's we need to take the African nation where they are with the experience and skills that they have and get them to work immediately. Selling the Burning Spear newspaper, use video and pictures that are on the ground, selling the spear. And the the sale of the Burning Spear, I don't think, really can uh, be understated in this. It's real easy to, <clears throat> it's real easy to uh, read the spear, see the spear, have your copies of the spear, um, and uh, maybe not as easy uh, in the minds of some, to get it out and distribute it. And more than that, I mean, the call really is to, you know, make sure that we're following up. We're not just selling the paper to any random person on the street and uh, not checking up on them, right? Like, it's important to know uh, how they enjoyed it, right? We want to be frequent in the same places. We want to know and go where the African nation is and have conversations, right? Have conversations about the material there, about the articles there and engage people, right? The uh, sale of the burning spear has been a tool that I've used uh, to get it uh, to get in, uh, really in community with uh, with, with uh, forces on the ground, and really strike up that conversation. My work's been bolstered by it, and I never I don't go anywhere without it. Uh, the conversations that uh, that we have in the spear are real critical I think for Africans to hear and and they they not only not only will reflect that back to you in in you know the uh, the way in which they receive the paper you know sometimes they're shocked because never they never heard of the burning spear it's 53 years old though or you know is this about Africa or is this about uh, here I said well it's about Africans wherever we are and uh, it's that kind of relationship uh, that you can foster and that kind of leadership that we provide I mean you're putting the party first and it's also uh, an excellent opportunity to invite the African nation to participate in the conversation you know I, I speak with a number of Africans even up here and it's surprising to uh, folks that there are a number of Africans up where I am but uh, let me tell you they got something to say and so I'm always I'm always uh, referencing the burning spear uh, directing uh, folks that if they have any interest they can absolutely write we can sit down and talk about it um, whichever 
and that's a tool that I'm using to organize doors, start conversations, open doors, organize forces, start uh, starting really to get in the ball rolling, not on just any old this or that, but under the principles of unity of the party, uh, under the principles of unity that can be found in our constituent organizations. And it's that way. It's really opening the minds of the Yeah, I am the chief of staff of the NDO's office. Uhuru Kenya. Uhuru. I'm Jaina Balamumba, and I am a recruiting specialist for the NDO office. So I just wanted to ask a couple of questions about why you do what you do. Um, your work as chief of staff is so integral to our recruitment process. And I wanted to ask, in terms of your own personal experience, what made your interview process unique? I've been around the party all my life. And so when it was time to do the interview, I remember it was Matsumela, it was Jamal, you know, uh, on there. And uh, as we, the questions that they were asking, you know, those beads of sweat, thank God they couldn't see that I really had to <laughs> answer quite honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and then once, you know, the vote, it went to the vote. Because there was times there I didn't think I was going to get in, you know, some things I said, like, you know, I, it was, I wasn't ready. It was a, it was really exciting, right? Mm -hmm. And once it went to the vote, everybody was congratulating me. I felt really, really good, um, elated in a certain kind of way, if that makes any sense. And um, quite emotional. Mm -hmm. What has been your journey to the African People's Socialist Party? I started off in the mass organization, and I started off in Impedum, and I was on the ground. I was uh, attending regular PEs, going to meetings, really um, start using the mass organization as a training ground mm -hmm. uh, for preparing me for the party because being so around the party and having party discipline is two totally different things. So I knew that this was going to be a great introduction to that. And then shortly after that, I started to take on leadership positions and uh, the people were calling, leadership was calling, DC Ona was calling, <laughs> Comrade, Chimer Comrade Director Chimaringa's calling, everyone literally calling. And um, it was only natural. It's like the world cannot, it's falsified. You cannot deny African internationalism. And so it just, it became where I was like, you know what? Let me stand firm in the African nation and not just be a part of the workers, but, you know, matriculate and be a part of the advanced detachment, detachment yes. of the African working yes. class. So that's what my unique journey was. And um, I'm really, really happy. I think we got a cheers. I think we have a real cheers. A right? real cheers. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but we're winning. We're winning. Victory is close. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a little tea for you. Mm. Uhuru, I want to appreciate my team for putting that video together. And uh, again, I want to salute Chairman O'Malley Ishitela, uh, Deputy Chair uh, Ona Zane Ishitela. And again, want to remind everybody uh, that we have some very exciting African Liberation Day events happening all over the world. We're going to be May 28th of 2022, we will see parades and we will see political conferences and with vendors. It's going to be in South Africa, Paris, Oakland, California, uh, St. Louis, Missouri. It's just going to be fantastic all over the world. 
We want to make sure that everybody will, whatever region you're in, get in touch with the National Director of Organization Office, 727-914-3617, or you can email us at chimaringawaller at gmail.com. Uh, we look forward to everybody coming to the ALD and building the African People's Social Support. Uh -huh. Uhuru, uhuru. Thank you, Andy Ochimaringa, and all members of his office for that professional and amazing report. Um, I don't know if we have any questions for this section of the report. I don't see any questions, comrade. Yeah, I believe we don't have any more questions. But okay, I'll did, go ahead and pass it over to you, Life. Well, I, I did see some comments and I just want to read a couple of those comments. Uh, comrade Demetria uh, mentioned, I guess, referring to Comrade Jamal's background. She said, Uhuru, yes, that march was black power. Uh, comrade Jamal had some uh, amazing visuals and Comrade Wednesday Odom says, I like that visual background, Comrade. And uh, it's about Africans where we are. That was a profound statement, Uhuru. Uh, Comrade Erica says, the process of connecting and engaging with people, analysis of the oppression experienced following by sound discussions and the collaborative work to build unity and understanding is the work of the African People's Socialist Party. It is the work of the leadership provided through the actions, writings, and teachings of our chairman, Omali Yishatela. The scientific theory of African internationalism is the people's theory. It takes me a minute to claim something as mine unless it is something that I truly unite with. And it wasn't but two months after joining in PEDEM before I knew the party was for the people. Salute to the Office of the National Director of Organization for this report. Salute to all comrades in this fight for black power and African liberation forward the revolution. Long-winded, but a huru. That's all right. We, we have to have long wind, comrade. <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah. Uhuru, and uhuru. I just want to give, uh, I just wanted to uh, actually give credit for the uh, background uh, to comrade Janova. That was uh, her ingenuity uh, in that piece. So uh, I just want to salute the comrade for that. Uhuru. Uhuru, right on, uh, comrade. And comrade Light. Sure. Also, I, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, identify Jason Westbrook as a part. He's a security liaison with the National Director of Organization Office. Uh, his picture was in there. I, I neglected to mention him. I just want to uh, be self-critical for not mentioning him. Jason Westbrook in St. Louis. Uh -huh. Chairman, look like you wanted to say something. I'm good. I, I, if I if I said anything, it would relate to the fact that I thought there was a a bit of a, I, I think it was understated. Some things that in the in this report, um, like uh, Kamala Kenya did say that she's been in, uh, connected to the party all of her life, which is true. I mean, from birth uh, to now. And uh, Comrade Janaba mentioned that she first sort of came into the party in the mass work, uh, but she neglected to say that her father, uh, Biko Lumumba, who was a giant uh, physically and uh, uh, in terms of uh, his uh, political unity, member of the party, he led the party um, in Oakland, California, uh, he did culture work. He organized all the young people. He was the one who, uh, during the time after they murdered Huey P. Newton, and there was a funeral inside the church uh, where, where Huey was funeralized, uh, Biko Lumumba. Some of you may have seen that iconic photo of him standing on top of a van, you know, this giant with his fist up in the air. Uh, uh, that's her father. And so uh, her pedigree is a little more than what was suggested by 
by the statement in that video. I just wanted to say that. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru.